we're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope. We believe. And we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. Our academic and applied esports program provides our competitive gamers a national stage to compete with other Division I universities. Our academic objective allows us to use esports to foster innovative interdisciplinary connections. Esports right now is an ever expanding career field, and having the opportunity to showcase its many facets through education is really inspiring. Quick match to start us off. It was Marquette taking down Idaho 13 to two on Ascent. And worst, we are headed back to Ascent for our second match or for my second match up of the day, which is WSU Crimson, Washington State versus, uh, pardon me, uh, versus William and Mary, who's new to the stream for today. And uh, Washington State is definitely not new to these prelims though. Yes, Washington State has been in, in the last prelim as well, prelim number two. They were doing very well for themselves, took out Marist College, came out of the group very, very effectively. And then it was Saint, uh, it was uh, DePaul University who stood in the way. But I believe it was two to one in the map score. And actually, the funniest thing is, Washington State had more rounds than DePaul did. <laughs> so Washington State did lose that series, but man, was it a close one. And you could really feel them sweating for it every which way. So when we mm. talk about Marquette being one of the favorites, Washington State is right there with them. Yeah, and DePaul, of course, went on to win that tournament, win that prelim. So yep. definitely Washington State is a force to be reckoned with. They're going up against William and Mary, who, you know, I personally have not cast this team. There's not a lot of history that I could find, though they have played in some of the other prelims, but uh, a little bit of a wild card compared to Washington State, who we've got a lot of tape on. So this is gonna be another one where we could see a blowout or we, you know, we could see William and Mary come in and surprise us back onto Ascent, our favorite worst. William and Mary are one of those teams that was like, oh, they they got grouped, right? They got grouped. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, they got grouped, but they were in a tough group. Like now, let me read off some names for you. Marquette, DePaul, Wichita State, that was their group. And if you imagine yeah. that, and they had close games against them all, I mean, you're talking 13-11 against DePaul, you're talking 13-8, uh, so you're not talking about blowouts here. This is a team that in this first prelim feel like they might have got snubbed by that group stage. I mean, 13-11 versus Wichita State, for example, those are just the matches where it's like, that's unfortunate for yourself. So yep. wanted to come back into this prelim. So this is actually one of those stacked groups where it's like Idaho is now in that William and Mary situation where you have Marquette, you have Washington mm -hmm. State, and you have now William and Mary. And of course, this is going to be top two does get out. So every map really does matter in a group stacked. Is There's no clear one and two. And then there's a clear drop off before that third. There is a one, two, and three in this group. And they are all going to fight to prove themselves for that playoff bracket. Yeah, you know, a classic group of death right here. And so we are going to see if William and Mary can take out Washington State in what, will, in what would be an upset because I have to give Washington State the edge in terms of favored to win this prelim. But we are going to see them go on to ascent Washington State to start on the attacking side and William and Mary on the defense. Nothing too wild, although D-Bands does hover that Yoru coming through. And actually it is Demetrius on to the Reyna. So could we see another yoru Reyna game? I think it's unlikely. I think D-Bands might be baiting us a bit, and there we go. No Silva had been locked in, so Washington State definitely going to go with a little bit more of a standard comp, but still, Demetrius going on to that Reyna, and Demetrius also played Reyna on Haven, by the way, in the last prelim, so watch out for those kills. Watch out for that aggressive, individualistic play style. Demetrius can really pull it off. Yep, and now we want to kind of see how these two potential titans of the group might face off against each other. And it's kind of weird to say when Marquette is still looming out there, but yeah. it is a clash of the titans indeed. And so 
How does this start out on Ascent? We just saw it before, but that was quite a different story for yeah. these two teams. I, I think the biggest question is always going to be this this Reyna versus the KO. Like That's the only difference in these comps. And for my money, I will always put it on the KO. Yes. Yeah, I totally agree. I think KO's excellent on this map, even though he's starting to become more standard, still underutilized. He's just, so, the zero point is so powerful. The flash for KO is probably the most powerful flash uh, of any in the game on a scent in particular. So, you know, you know, we got to keep our eyes out on that. And like you say, they're going to see a very different look from what we saw last map or last match. And already we do see alert coming in Washington state, leaving the chamber over at B as they head into the A site. It's banana duck underneath with that head hunter, but loaf is going to take that out with an aggressive look on the frenzy and the plant will come through onto the double boxes. That's going to be a post plant already gained with Demetrius pushing up aggressively into heaven and look at the kills coming through Washington State. Their aggressive post plant leads them to a flawless round in the first half. Flawless round going into pistol, but we'll see how they kind of bounce back as this map does go on. It is going to be hopefully a long one here as we're trying mm -hmm. to see these teams battle back and forth, but so far, so good for Washington State as now we try to get into what is the what is the play here? We're just going to do a standard conversion round, actually saving money on our chamber. I think that means that's where you know they want the money to go for the operator later yep. on. So I think that is kind of inclination. It's going to be iffy wheeling an operator more than Lothman. Yeah, it's also Sova um, saving up there as well. So they are getting a little greedy, but it looks like it could pay off as Demetrius has already found something. There's the shorty starting to come through. Hazmat gets two. That's great value for the Omen. And they've already done a lot, William and Mary, in terms of getting some sort of value out of their save round. Washington State do get access to the site, though, and it doesn't appear they will be punished for a little bit of greed in terms of the finances. So Loafmane coming in. Loafmane actually gets blinded by his own team, and it's going to be Reed. Uh, who saves the uh, their jet in that situation. Washington State end with three players alive and maintain those specters into the next round. D-Bands has enough for an operator already if they really want to go crazy. You saw Iffy saving up, and so I thought that might be the play, but instead, the Odin comes out on round two, or round three, pardon me, once again. So Washington State, very, very powerful so far in the attack. They're going to be up in the bonus round for round three. Mm-hmm. Now we have the Odin actually going to be coming out and making its appearance here. This does not seem like much of a bonus when you are yeah. purchasing such an expensive weapon to place onto your Sova. It has kind of gained popularity to do this onto your Sova, to put that Odin in their hands. But uh, still, on, on the third round, it seems a bit crazy. And on the attack, in, in too. Situation. And know. on the attack, yeah. I mean, yeah, much more common on the counter defense. Spam. Yeah, it's just a counter spam, but there's no spam coming out, especially yeah, on exactly. the third round. Guacamole with two flashes out. The second one is huge. Guacamole with a spray down. D-Bands does finally trade that one out, but they're down to a four versus two. Washington State were completely bamboozled by that second flash coming in, and that right there shows us exactly the power of KO on this map. Excellent out of that cat position there, out of that tree room. And here's Hazmat trying to avoid the Leer, trying to get ahead of it, but D-Bands on the Odin, swinging out for the Ego Peak, and they've gotten themselves into a two versus three. Feng gets all the info, and Banana Duck takes advantage of that. Demetrius is down, and it's only D-Bands here. Spraying forward, and Feng jiggles into it. One versus two. This would be the 4K, I believe, for D-Bands, as he gets Spike. spike down here's banana duck and faint trying to come in at the same time there's the jump up from jet was the info gained and there we go faint goes for the kill and depends that's a big gun to pull out in that short amount of time so william and mary will break that win streak and get their round on the board and like i said they purchased a lot into this round too i believe so that's not even much of a bonus round that might actually hurt them economically i think their sova might not have basically any money here but yeah, not going to have really anything. Mm -hmm. They're not 3,900, actually. But that does not count utility, which is the biggest part. Like, of, of people think, oh, 3,900 is all you yeah. need for uh, armor plus uh, Phantom or Vandal. No, you need utility on Sova is the most important part. So you yep. always want to over have on that uh, on that agent. But they're not going to have that. Uh, obviously, yeah. the amount of money they saved on Iffy is going to help. But uh, still, two sheriffs coming in this round. And William and Mary are not in the best financial situation either. You can see all those kills that Washington State managed to get are putting these players on specters here. So it's a bit of a wash this round, potentially. Although that Odin, of course, still available. 
Washington State taking up space. They've done this so far every attack round. Put that smoke up in mid and try to take space forward. But Hazmat's got the angle. That's a great play. Getting that gun barrel spotted out and Loafmane goes down early. So William and Mary will try to reset. Re is going for that, but the trade comes through. And there we go. Aggressive right after a pick comes off. William and Mary pounce on the attackers and they equalize their half. The rounds, probably. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what we're going to see next is going to be kind of how does the economy try to swing back for Washington State? This is the last weird, this is the last round of having a buy, right? Yes. This next round yes. is not going to have any money. We're going to have a, a belabored buy at best. And so now we're seeing even Guardians come out. D-Bands is opting for no weapon. Oh, never mind. Someone bought him. Okay. I was gonna say, yeah. No weapon. That's weird. But uh, no, uh, we are going to see that. I was like, uh, I don't think Hunter's Fury is a, is a substitute for a weapon like a <laughs> like a Port of Force or a knife. Sorry. So uh, it would have been odd to see that come out. Oh, 5 HP going to get taken out by the Guardian. And now that's a free Vandal. Excellent from Ree there to punish that. Getting the info and taking out Feint who couldn't dash away properly. Didn't get back into the market position. So Banana Duck going to equalize over on Iffy. That's a kill on the Lurker on A. So they're going to not have to deal with that and be able to... To rotate freely over towards B. You can see that from the shadows is used, and Fang is not ready for that, but the Guardian Fang turns around and goes for the peak. What is this, Fang? Just no fear at all. Re does get does get punished as well by that, and Banana Duck getting another one. Here's Demetrius trying to get it back. Five bullets left in the Vandal, and D-Bands needs to make something happen here. The Hunter's Fury is available, so if this plant does manage to get down, as Demetrius is doing right now, then there's a potential post-plant situation, but Demetrius still does doesn't have the time, doesn't have the space, and gets traded out. Here's D-Bands coming around with the Vandal, takes a little bit of damage for his name, and Banana Duck punishing, but we're in a 1v1, and Banana Duck win and wins it. Here comes William and Mary in a very back-and-forth defensive round, but they do manage to get the advantage. 3-2 to two now. Now it's starting to run away with it here a little bit in this first half. Obviously, at any point, it can turn on its head, given a thrifty uh, or any other such the unexpected round win that can come out from Washington State. Obviously going to have a buy next round to try and equalize this out. But so far, William and Mary have been winning in these 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 round site encounters, one call them. Yeah. But sometimes the bomb, the spike isn't down. Sometimes yeah. it is. But these kind of uh, these dances or waltzes around the spike sites, they're, they're winning them out so far in this first half. They're pressuring these approaches really well. And there's the zero point to deny D-Bands the ability to get that info, get that drone in. Also, of course, getting a lot of info for themselves with the KO. They're going to have to back off, or at least hesitate for a little bit. Still three players from Washington State waiting for that mid-presence to continue to establish. And once they run into this contact over at Tree Room, that might be the sign for Washington State to go. There is the Leer to come through, but Guacamole's on a great position here. Remember, this is the save coming in from Washington State. So once again, the double flash, and they just can't challenge Guacamole in that position right now. So powerful from there with those flashes. Faint also taking out Loafmain. Their position on the A site is threatened. Faint continuing to go for those peaks, continuing to get the headshots. Four versus two now. Washington State on their save have almost no chance to get back into this one. And look at where D-Benz is. Might play for the Hunter's Fury, but they're, they're aware. Banana Duck just going to walk forward and take out D-Benz as they're playing that long uh, position. And uh, really nice awareness for them to re to obviously just look at the score and go, okay, this guy has ult where they're going to be playing. Well, they're running cat already. Just chase them down. Don't let them get an ult off and stop us because we need as much time as possible. And uh, yeah, like I said, William and Mary off to a flying start here after the pistol round loss. They have equalized and then some as they are now up double the score of Washington State, but they're going to try and figure, fix that with D-Bands once again, piloting that Odin. I think this is interesting on the attack side because yeah. you're going to do it as a counter spam. You're not really using it for much else. Uh, and there's no spam coming out from William and Mary. I think they kind of just saw that this is what people are doing and they said, we're going to do this, right? I don't think, I don't know if, yeah. maybe there's other options, but uh, I think it's a little short-sighted. It, do it doesn't seem to have that clear of a place in what they're doing on the attack right now. And indeed, William and Mary are just shutting down everything they try right here. You can see now the Odin with that, you know, lowered mobility, with that sort of lowered, uh, you know, versatility on that gun. 
just stuck in B main right now. Guacamole comes in, D-Bands does find the kill, but look at how trapped they are in this B main site. If they go back out here, they don't know if there's a player and they've got to take a risk. They do take it and no one will be rewarded. Maybe it's just a comfort thing worse because D-Bands, yeah, continues to pick this up and I agree, situations where it doesn't seem like it is the correct play and or it doesn't seem like it's really giving them anything extra than would a Vandal or a Phantom. I also don't think, uh, I also don't want people to think that I was saying it's the reason they're losing. No, that part just no, is not the reason they're not. they're losing currently, but it is not something that's helping them as Re does find a way out of the dark cover and takes out Fang and gonna get mm. taken out by Banana Duck there. That was an expensive round for them. That was the Empress used, that was the Toy de Force as well off yep. the board. So a lot of stuff not only used for them, but also look at the ready signs available here for William and Mary. They have everything in the pocket as the defensive side. They don't need to go aggressive with them if they don't have to. They've got the alt economy, they've got the credit economy, and like you say, everything going in the favor of William and Mary right now, and they're fragging out as well. Faint going aggressive on these defensive spots is very, very effective so far for them, and you know, I can only imagine what Faint is going to be way. able to do uh, on the attack. So William and Mary, you know, it's not just that Washington State, you know, don't maybe have the most organized plan for attack on this map, it's that William and Mary are playing the defensive very very well here i'm so impressed and so happy to see that they've got this level of preparation and this kind of game plan coming into this map and now we get to see on this another another eco round what is the play here from washington state they have the trademark go down there is a complete setup here but instantly they're going to see the ko alt come out to try and nullify this Mm -hmm. They do get something out of it. That was the drone deactivated there. Still no real contact, though. And you can see the presence in mid is a big deal here for the chamber. And as a matter of fact, it's the loaf main who finds the first kill. Faint getting a little overconfident walking out into mid there and is completely punished by the opposing jet. Here's Guacamole getting a good amount of info that they are rotating through mid. And indeed, that is the choice. Heading up towards here as the smoke from Omen has faded. Washington State... Needs to continue left. to pressure this, though, as they've only got 25 seconds remaining in the round. He seems to be the hit, and Hazmat can do so much damage from this position. Misses the shot, gets the info. How do they respond? The two A rotators start to come through, but the attack is already on. It's Fang who gets the shot right through the blind. That's Loafmane going down to the headshot, and Iffy oh. has such an amazing trigger discipline, but he misses the headhunter. Iffy, a tragedy coming in, has such a good position. But Washington State still have a decent spot in this round. They have two players backside, and they have one player waiting Waiting on the box. The picks are coming through. The kills are coming through. Banana Duck gets taken down. Demetrius gets the second headshot and the thrifty for Washington State in an absolutely wacky round right there. Like I said, the way to get back into games is often through the thrifties. When the sheriff sheriffs are a bit crazy sometimes, you know, one tap to the head and you end up winning it. And, and now look at that. They're going to have a pretty solid economy here to go into the next couple rounds. And William and Mary, because the rounds have been fairly close, uh, they are not going to have as big a lead as you would think, expect of some a team that has won five rounds in a row. So, uh, going to be interesting to see how they're going to adapt to this opting mm -hmm. in for the operator here onto Faint. And again, it was off of the fact that Faint went too aggressive in mid yes. and did not check that high, uh, top mid position, and that led to the downfall of them in that round. There's the tag through the box there, but Hazmat does get the kill as well. So the, already this mid presence is being disrupted. Loafmane still playing up close and punishes Faint for that off angle. That's already a good shot there and Hazmat is low, could also be punished. That's a great push by Loafmane, clearing up so much space and giving Washington State the advantage in the round once again. Here's a little Banana Duck this time, trying to catch the rotate. A good smoke to delay, but there's Fang. So good on this site so far, so consistent with the aim. Loafmane has to pounce once again. A 3k on the round so far. Banana Duck takes out Re on the way in, but the spike still approaches the site, still will be able to get planted, and we need to keep our eyes on those two defenders. Here's Loafman. Loafman's going for the ace right now. That's four kills on the round so far, and Banana Duck up against two low HP players gets tagged by the drone. That's actually pretty huge for the delay. Will he expect Loafman tucked into this logs position? There it comes. One peek. 
Shadow Duck gets out of the way of that one. The smoke comes through. Here's D-Bands maybe trying to play off of the crossfire. No, Lokman's head is spotted. There it is, but D-Bands with the trade who had picked up the Odin there. A 4K for Lokman, and it was absolutely needed in that round. Absolutely needed, and now no, Mary starting to feel the hurt economically as well. They're now on the, uh, the I'm going to say, the precipice of being broken in terms yes. of their economy. And now they have to really pick it up this next round. Uh, you still have some members from Washington State that are not uh, as economically secure, but they have a good cushion. You know, you have a Vandal there just in the bank for re that they can probably give away to someone else, maybe. Uh, you have a lot of options here for Washington State, but it's been a close one and really kind of been streaky for these teams. It definitely has, and neither team has really been able to get much of a footing, as you say. William and Mary have been kind of disrupted from that in the last couple of rounds, and this is something that I love about this map and about this matchup so far. These two teams, in particular William and Mary, who we haven't seen a lot of that recently, just really showing us some very, very high-level Valorant. You know, I dare say it's a nice change from last game, uh, Worst. Yeah. And, uh... Leo's gonna come out, but again, that's the problem with Leo. It's only a near sight, not a blind. You can still see barely in front of you. That's gonna allow the 2K come in from Guacamole and Little Banana Duck finding the 3K. The foodies of the group are finding their first meal. And now we're trying to see, again, can this kind of pivot into a 8 4 half for them, right? Can we streak yeah. this into an 8 4 half, or will there be an instant response for Washington State? Guacamole and Banana Duck on A site. Serving up a, an absolute dinner to their opponents right there. And Lil Banana Duck in particular, look at that scoreboard. 15 kills on the chamber. So solid. But it doesn't even feel like they're being carried by this chamber, you know? It, it, William no. and Mary look very, very solid in every portion of the map. Neither A nor B is a guaranteed hit or plant. Just Fury comes through. Feng trying to avoid this, dipping and dodging around and only gets tagged once. 70 HP now on the Sova, who's been so pivotal to those B defenses. Here's Loafmane now getting aggressive. Washington State need to try to take some space, but lots of time in the round. Here is the info gained by the drone. The Leer comes out and the drone is taken down. Loafmane's going to try to go off of that, but gets hit by the trademark there and so has to slow down in this slow field. Already that mid control taken. Washington State continue to do this and it's been back and forth on whether it's worked with Feng getting a kill through the wall there. It's definitely going to dissuade them, but Lokman continues to go forward. Great shot onto Hazmat. Continuing to look for more, but Feint is in such an amazing position right here. Feint gets two. Feint absolutely destroys this attack. And it's a four versus two now on the round with Lokman. The blade storm out and the 50 HP left. Demetrius gets things started here. He needs so much more right now. And that kill for Banana Duck might seal the deal with the suppression coming through. The blades are out. Loaf Main needs an absolutely miraculous play, and it's not going to happen again. William and Mary hold on the B defense. Last round before the switch. And now it is going to be kind of do or die right now for Washington State for this half. I mean, 8 4 is a really tough one to come back from. 7 5 is very doable. Uh, I mean, like, obviously, you win pistol, you're even, right? You know? Whereas yes. 8 4, you still have to get. Through the bonus round as well and mm -hmm. such so uh, it is a little bit a lot better for um yeah for washington state if they can manage to even this one out and the question is you know how does this reina match up against the ko because that is the head-to-head -head they've chosen in terms of defensive play right ko is so effective we've already seen how good it is in that tree and cat position on the defense Ooh, faint going up and getting tagged gets really low but ends up getting away with their life very close call there. Loafmane goes for the flash. Actually, it was Guacamole tried to flash and I think flashed himself there. So Loafmane punishes a bit of a mistake on that. 7 HP for Faint. Trying to continue to get forward in mid. And one swing out into B main is all it takes. Demetrius will punish that. And Washington State going towards that coveted 7-5 to five, as you pointed out. A much, much better scoreline. Asmat, though, has something to say about that. Demetrius with a good trade. That's a four versus two here. And they have yet to actually take a sight, but Washington State are in an excellent position. Banana Duck tries to punish, doesn't get traded. And so a two versus three situation here as the spike plant will go down and these two players will approach from heaven. And going in 
with the dart. Feng does manage to get that info, but the paranoia comes at the perfect time. Still, Feng gets one, and Demetrius pounces on him from behind. That's going to be 7-5. to five. Washington State do get themselves to a relatively equal standing. Now it's all about how this execution of this next half is going to go. I would still, if I'm watching this, I really, really, really want this pistol to mm -hmm. go my way. It went mm -hmm. for them before, but wanting to obviously repeat that success is obvious in, in terms of how impactful these pistol rounds end up being on the entire match in Valorant. Yeah. And now how is it going to play out? Looks like it's going to be an early pop here for William and Mary onto A. This is kind of typical of pistol rounds where you have less utility to work with, so less neutral or less uh, default play is really applicable because there's not really much utility to bait out. Uh, and you might also just expend your own. So you just want to kind of overwhelm the ones on the site with the utility you have. Yeah, we can see if those that aggression will come through for Washington State on this defensive half with those two duelists. They are separated at this point sometimes you do see the duelists play together there's loaf main this is the sheriff shot but repeats for more it's a lot of info gained and actually reed does hold strong remains on 10 hp and guacamole will punish that a four versus four and william and mary have got the site as a matter of fact the rotation has not come through that fast washington state got on their apartment william and mary got on there pretty quickly they're going to be able to establish whatever post plant positions they want here's loaf main trying to find way in to some sort of control but banana duck and hazmat punish there's loaf main with the trade but is the damage already done banana duck from a main loaf main goes down as banana duck just absolutely swings out on him and eight to three as you say that was a big pistol round for washington state and william and mary instead are the ones who get it they're gonna take this one away and now it is time for the fight back um what does it look like? Well, it's not going to be on this round. Not in this close of a game. Do you want to kind of gamble it yep. all on a four spike? That is only something Cloud9 would do. And uh, <laughs> we saw how that turned out. So um, we want kind of to make this as even as possible going into the bonus. We want to get as many guns as possible, though, away from William and Mary, because you want that bonus to be as safe as possible. Because if you lose that bonus, it might just be all over. Absolutely. That could be the beginning of the end. You, if that risk does not pay off instead a different type of risk from loaf main looking out with the classic and that is easily handled William and Mary looking to deal with this without much uh without much trouble and yeah you know the more I see the more it looks like William and Mary have a serious advantage and a serious you know leg up on this map they are just so good they were so good on that defense at dealing with everything Washington State was able to put together and it to me, it just looks like William and Mary have got more preparation. Maybe they've got more reps or just some more comfortability here, specifically on Ascent. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, it's going to come through. So about making that bonus as safe as possible, not going to happen <laughs> in yep. the slightest. It is going to be a very, very strong bonus here with a full buy available for everyone, I think. Yeah. I don't know what happened to that Spectre. Okay, they're going to buy up the Vandal here. want to make this a bit more dangerous, a bit more spicy here for Washington State. And the band is kind of struggling to decide what weapon do they want to go for. It's mm -hmm. not the Vandal. Once again, one of those characters. Oh, it is going to be the Vandal, but light armor. Light it's armor, one of those characters yeah. you cannot afford not having utility on Sova. Uh, yeah. If you play Sova, you know like you have to have utility on that character. Especially on Ascent, right? Yeah, All the have... info that needs to be gathered. And especially with Washington State not having the KO for that extra little bit of info gathering and intel. They the Sova utility is just paramount to play any round in this entire map. And so William and Mary definitely feeling good about that. But Loaf Main already gets one, dashes out of the way. The zero point doesn't come in in time to deny the escape. And so Loaf Main gets the info and gets the kill. Very, very good start for Washington State. There's the paranoia. Re with a double spray down. Perfectly timed there. The a game of inches once again. And with Iffy taking down Lil Banana Duck, it's only going to be Feng remaining, who's looked good in this, but not good enough. And a four-player stack remaining on Washington State. That is how you defeat a bonus. You would have much rather had gotten a couple more guns out there, considering you bought the rifle onto yeah. Little Banana Duck. Obviously, they only did that because they knew they'd have enough money to buy next round nonetheless, and they just wanted to make it a little more dangerous. But given that investment you made, uh, you can't have an operator now, you would have much rather had gotten a couple more off the board. But so, just the bonus, as they say, as the uh, fans always like to say when it happens to their team. Yeah, yeah. Just the bonus. <laughs> and uh, we're trying to see here if from 9-6 they can close this one out, because it could be a little dangerous. 
Just the bonus, T-sided map, cringe comp, all the uh, <laughs> all the copium that you want to throw out there. But both of these teams are still very much in this one. No cringe comps here. I, I'd argue Demetrius definitely has earned the right to pick up that Reyna. And William and Mary continue on the attack. Demetrius, though, doesn't earn their stripes in this round. It's beheaded by the peak, and here comes the info gathering. Iffy gets out of the way. Guacamole gets another kill onto D-Bands, and B-Site is open for business, except if Iffy's able to do that. That's a great find there onto Faint. But Lil Banana Duck taking out the mid Lurker, the mid rotator, is a huge oh. deal, and on 11 HP, Lil Banana Duck gets another headshot. Uh -huh. Loaf main needs some heroics here, and already it starts. <gasps> Two big kills, a failed dash or a fake. Either way, Loaf main doesn't get into the position that he wants to in a one versus two with 58 HP remaining. There is even an argument to save this Vandal right here. So difficult, but no, not Loaf main. Gonna go for this one. Tries to get one, and Guacamole with the with the timing comes out, and Loaf main never had a chance right there. William and Mary go up 10 to six. 10 to 6 is a strong start for William Mary after their last prelim outing ended in group stage. They don't want to repeat the mistakes of the past. I mean, can you really call it a mistake, though, considering the level of teams they were up against? Yeah, exactly. It more yeah. so felt like a, a trick of fortune, really. Mm. Uh, now they're trying to prove that it was that misfortune for them in that prelim and make their way into into the playoffs let me put this out like washington state was a very strong team the last That's prelim right. based on against very strong teams themselves so the Let's fact that play. it is william mary seems so confident on this map if this ever was to be a best of three series and i see a scent picked for them i'm confident in their ability to to complete that map yeah, and you know, you point out, you make a really great point about kind of their redemption after that loss. You know, they are now in the perfect position to prove themselves exactly to themselves, to the other teams, and to us, the viewers, that, you know, they can deal with a group of death. They can deal with some very heavy competition right now. If he misses a couple of shots, the headhunter's got three remaining in the chamber right here. No pun intended, as if he needs to deal with a huge peak. But there we go, another headshot. If he's been slow this half, this game, and finally goes down, but great damage done for the Washington State Chamber. Defenders have the advantage here in a save round right now only those sheriffs up and no map control what's it all taken as a matter of fact Washington State are encroaching on their position right here hazmat down to 27 HP as well so look at this collapse two players are coming up mid as there's only the Sova in tree to really defend a but there's the smoke come coming through flash clear this corner and how do Washington State react to this? It would be so, so huge for them to get this round, but there comes the Null Command. They're denying the abilities from coming through. They have to use the guns alone. There's Guacamole going down. There's Lil Banana Duck and Hazmat. It's only D-Bands remaining, and the classic, who is name? He pulls the trigger right now. Hazmat is so low, but not going to get the shot. Lil Banana Duck pulls them out of harm's one way. HP. And William and Mary, Hazmat with Wait, one HP after that classic shot. So it doesn't look like they res, but I think that since Ko was only on the ground and hadn't died, still retains. And there you go. You can see oh, that Vandal was retained. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I know that I, I ran into that uh, the other day on a cast as well. And it was like, hmm, I uh, actually am I'm not sure which uh, it is. But yeah, if he's down but hasn't died, he retains the gun. I think I should change that. Hmm. You don't like Lots. it? Uh, I, I think maybe it's like they're dead, kind of, so like they shouldn't have right. the gun. I don't know. KO's already so strong, so maybe it's Fair just enough. a new point. I mean, obviously, there's always so much talk about Asian balance. I think those more niche things don't matter as much, but could be yeah. impactful to the economy of a team. But as we're trying to see what the team now decides to do, William and Mary, 11-6 up, almost double again the scoreline, but this time with a much more rounds under their belt, so it's a much more impactful double their scoreline. And they look to uh, to accomplish just that is already one down if that jet. Yeah, a little lack of discipline there from Loaf Main. Those smokes, you know, you are not safe in those smokes in a game like this. There's definitely, and when the pressure gets high, it's a good idea to be spamming through. And there's Faint actually going in a little aggressive, and Iffy will punish that, but gets traded out. Four versus three is William and Mary take A. And it's going to be, yeah, a three-person retake. All of them heading towards heaven right now, uh, giving... 
William and Mary enough time to really establish post plant spots. Demetrius, and then he's a heroic play. The double Leer will come through, and Re has already gone down trying to peek off that. There's Demetrius getting the headshot, dismisses in, and goes forward, but the kills come through and didn't see that player behind him or just didn't turn in time. William and Mary get match point here. 12 6 match point. And look at the alts they have up. It's almost all of the utility alts outside of that null command. And uh, I mean, having the Omen alt for pivots, having the jet just to break crosshairs and just go in and go crazy. Obviously, Fang to follow up. I mean, this is going to be a, an explosive push and you don't have anything to lock it down, right? You don't have D-bands with a Hunter's Fury of their own to try and stall out a push. Uh, that's an interesting trick right there. Yeah, yeah. You saw Juggling the bouncing the, spike. Yeah, that's fun. The bouncing the spike. spike. So, that's like, that's <laughs> the classic carnival name for things. The bouncing blank, right? Yeah, it and sounds like a, out. yeah, exactly. It sounds like a, a ride that, uh, you could take your uh <laughs> take your mini donuts onto but we are getting into this and yeah i gotta shout out a little banana duck one more time as um 27 kills in 18 rounds man that's absurd for the chamber and you know if he is a shadow of, of that impact right now has had a very slow game as i mentioned Washington State not able to rely on their chamber for the frags in this particular game. It's unusual if he has had some very, very pop-off moments. Already the defense comes through, though. Washington State with this really rough buy, this sort of half, you know, scrounged together weaponry. Do manage to find the advantage, but give up control of B site. So the 5 versus 3 retake will start to come through, and... You need to be clearing this B main position, but look at the attacking setup. Washington State simply did not have time to get into good post plant positions. They are stuck right now on that B site. As the paranoia comes through, Hazmat needs a huge play. Only manages to get one. Four versus two, and there we have it. Washington State will stay in the game 12 to 7 now on Ascent. 12 to 7, and they're definitely on board to. Maybe get some more here, but again, the economy for William and Mary is looking impeccable. So that's not going to be a concern for them right now. What is going to be a concern is the potential momentum building for Washington State as they get that round on the board. The economic reprieve it gives them, I don't think Faint is going to have almost any utility, but is going to have both the Vandal and the full armor. And obviously Fang, a little loaded right there, might even be able to buy the operator for Faint if they so desire. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's going to be a lot of money in the hands of William Mary to make this round work, but then they're going to be kind of a little bit out of luck in terms of Faint's money um, yeah. in particular. Yeah, both teams are not not completely in dire straits financially, but of course, Washington State cannot lose a single round here. So, it all comes to the same thing. There is the zero point to come through and reveal Iffy, who played close, backs up to the generator, and these two B defenders, pardon me, A defenders, about to be tested. And they hold this. It's going to be a question of yeah. how the utility is going to come out for Washington State. It's five men here. They're not even playing for any mid control. Drone through the smoke. They are going to decide to try and make a play off of it. Yeah, Rotates waiting haven't out that come smoke. through just yet. Still nobody, like you say, lurking anywhere. This is a full hit. So if they get value out of this, the defenders, I have them. William and Mary will be out of luck. But for now, you do see the site gain. You have a five versus five retake situation right here. Washington State they do manage to establish themselves in A main, and you can see the push coming up now from Chamber up mid. That could be a huge pick. If Loaf Main and Demetrius are not prepared for this, that could completely shut it down. Oh, Banana Duck Banana. does come through and does get them both. That is absolutely huge. Demetrius goes for the trade. It's a two versus two, though. Has to get the shot here and D-bands with the peak. It's Feng on match point right now. If he could deny this, the Hunter's Fury also available, so they have to push him. If D-bands goes down here, the round is nearly over, but D-bands keeps them alive once again. Washington State stay in it. And these rounds are so close. Don't know how the uh, hell position got cleared so easily. I mean, one of them went down, not the other, but it was very interesting to see uh, how good of a retake that was, considering how unfortunate the flank coming in uh, the timing of it, right? It was yeah. a good timing on it. They found yeah. one. They found two, actually. Obviously, two for one is great right there, but when your site gets traded out two for one as well, it might not just be worth it. And now, again, like I said, yep. certain members not going to have that much money. They're going to play for the ult up here. That's why they're stacking. So, I mean, that's what they should be stacking. Little Manandak should be here for the ult up. I don't know why they're running away. Yeah, maybe 
just going to risk taking the A one, or they're just kind of sacking this round. But yeah, I agree. They're set up to take this ult orb, but they decide not to. Oh, Loaf Main with an amazing shot to give Washington State the advantage. The operator singing out in mid. A little banana duck. Instead of getting the ult orb, we'll just recover that uh, vandal here. And now it looks like they're going for the ult orb, so change their mind. In terms of where they were going to be headed, where in particular Banana Duck was headed. Not even going for the orb. Maybe they may be afraid of a spam potential here, but I agree. I, I think that should have been, it was kind of a clear objective they should have been going for and Revealing sort of decide any. against it. Maybe not wanting to reveal their position, but that's I mean, not that going to be, so. <laughs> that's not going to matter because they do not have the reflexes to take out that dart for the recon, so. Four versus five, William and Mary. Still four match points to go against Washington State. This round, they've managed, they've haven't been able to take much at all. And as a matter of fact, Washington State haven't left. had to use a lot of utility either. So resources still available for those defenders. With 20 seconds left, they are ro are they rotating to A? It's just going to be such a scuffed hit here. They have no time. They have to deal with the trademarks. They have to deal with three defenders. And I don't know. I mean, it's almost like you should just Ten back up and save. save at this point. Nine seconds left. Worse. There's no way. Faint is trying to go yeah, in. No if he already takes one down. The round is over. They have to back up. Faint, what? So Faint just randomly grabs a kill. Imagine 10 more seconds on that. Imagine Un 10 more seconds. Unreal. They just went a little bit too slow. And what an unusual round there. But William and Mary... At least they're gonna buy this more. I mean, they have still the money here. They save from that round, even if it's so inadvertently. Awkward. Yeah. But yeah, that, that is awkward indeed. Now you're gonna have the gun on Loaf Main. Yep. So they do get the full buy. Full rifle round coming up here. And now, you gotta imagine William and Mary need this one here. Washington State do seem to have gotten some momentum, albeit in a very unusual way. You know, it doesn't here. look like the momentum we normally see with the eye test. But still, they've strung together a lot of rounds. Three four rounds at this point. Loaf main getting tagged up early. Definitely will aid things along. Will aid things along, but uh, we're still gonna have to worry a fair bit about the fact that this is match point, and yep. will continue to be match point until overtime does hit, so. Gonna be playing this one slow, gonna be walking their way up A. They have some kind of uh, they have some mid and B control, a little bit more passive on mid, but they have plenty of B main control. Might even take a fight here with this over. If that happens and they find out there's no one else there, it'd be dangerous. Yeah, here's Hazmat, like you say, continuing to get that info, but does get spotted out. So they're just not really ready for that recon dart. And will this hit? That doesn't strike true for the shock dart. So the info gained, forcing the omen to back off. And still, the A presence is here. Washington State, pardon me, William and Mary continue to run down the clock in these rounds, though, and they are not getting a lot out of this left. time that they're expending. They aren't getting a lot of utility usage here. They're just waiting out these omen smokes. Here comes the paranoia. It's perfectly timed. William and Mary have to wait a little bit longer. Here come oh. the smokes. Faint goes up aggressive with the op. If Faint gets something here, that would be amazing. He's in a lot of danger. Going to be revealed there as he takes out Ree, so that's definitely going to be some value. The spike is planted. Washington State in a four versus three with low HP. Banana Duck equalizes. What will the result be of Iffy? There's Fang and Iffy trading as well. A two versus two. Tour de Force now available. And little Banana Duck has such a good position on this spike plant, but Demetrius try to find his way in it's just banana duck remaining to try to finish this one off the spike is wide out in the open form if he gets this kill a little bit scuffed on the spray but still gets it and demetrius has to push this demetrius goes for the headshot and that's not gonna do it with banana duck on the clutch william and mary go 13 and 9 in a very exciting match on ascent amazing play from banana duck throughout this entire map and who better to end it off you know yes yeah and banana duck two clutch Unreal. 33 kills in regulation. So impressive from the chamber there, William and Mary. <laughs> and just in general, I mean, William and Mary look amazing on Ascent. I, I love their play on this map. So measured, so e able to deal with what they were 
faced against in terms of attack. Washington State just could not find ways into the sites that well. They couldn't find a real hold on either side. Even though they had a really nice run in their last half here, still, it felt like it was only a matter of time before Washington State finished that one off. Yeah, and I'm really loving to see this style of William Mary. It's been so long since I last saw them, and to go up against people that I know, teams that I know that are very good, and to see them perform like this on maps, I will be extremely excited to see these teams in playoff series. I'm just kind of sad that from this group, I can't see all three of them, Marquette, Washington, and William Mary in the playoff series. It's like, oh, if only I could see you there. Yeah, uh, it feels no. like all of them deserve it. So we've yeah. got uh, William and Mary uh, once again on stream next up after this break. They will be playing now against Marquette. So William and Mary have another challenge and I feel like we got another very exciting game on our hands so don't go anywhere we'll see you in a bit